coming up as Labour overtake the Tories in the polls for the first time since the pandemic started. One third of Boris Johnson's failing cabinet have been moved sideways or booted out during this week's cabinet reshuffle. And I don't think that's a coincidence. We take a look at some of those leading or joining Johnson's top team and what it means for the future of Johnson's government. Stay tuned. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe and get notified of new releases every Wednesday and Saturday. Boris Johnson has today described his cabinet as his rugby squad, with references to half-time pep talks, gum shields and other such nonsense. The usual Johnson bluster, you might think. But what it does demonstrate is that he considers governing the country to be just one big game. But let's look at some of the main features of this reshuffle. Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab was probably the biggest casualty of the reshuffle. Doubtless, Boris Johnson must have watched the recent Truth to Power video, which explained how Raab got the nickname of the turnip during Brexit negotiations with Brussels, and reported on the details of Raab prioritising his holiday ouzo and sunbed over evacuating hundreds of Afghanis who had worked with British forces before the Taliban took control of Kabul. As a result of this crisis, many of Raab's staff within the Foreign Office leaked details of his Pretty Patel-esque, domineering, arrogant and bullying management style within the department. Johnson agrees with Truth to Power's conclusion from that video that the man is unfit for office. That said, Raab retains the title of Deputy Prime Minister. But this means nothing in reality. A real deputy would stand in for the Prime Minister during any absence. But during the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan, both Prime Minister Johnson and Deputy Prime Minister Raab were on holiday at the same time. So he failed to carry out the very basic duty of a deputy, which is to be there when the boss is absent. Good riddance to Raab, but unfortunately, his successor is Liz Truss, the nincompoop previously the International Trade Minister, cutting and pasting existing EU trade deals with third countries on slightly worse terms, and agreeing an Australian trade deal forecast to bankrupt UK farming, add significantly to global warming, and which allows animal products into the UK, which will fall way below EU standards, meaning that UK and EU food standards will diverge, wrecking any chance of re-entering a single market or customs union with the EU anytime soon. Clearly, Johnson did not watch our recent video on why Liz Truss is unfit for office. Although, as she is apparently the biggest suck up to Johnson within his entire team, he would probably forgive her all her sins, like he has forgiven her for being an ardent Remainer until it was politically expedient for her to cast convictions aside and support Brexit to further her political career. Much like she once left the Liberal Democrats in order to further her prospects of getting elected as an MP. Can I just point out that Liz Truss has absolutely no experience of international trade, nor of foreign affairs, nor of diplomacy. Her only qualifications are being a suck-up to Johnson and one of his earliest and strongest supporters in his candidacy for leader of the Tory party. Although it's a completely ridiculous appointment, it was widely briefed and therefore no big surprise. There was a surprise though in Johnson's appointment of another swivel-eyed supporter of his, the disgraced and quite frankly horrifying Nadine Dorries, best known to the public as a contestant on ITV's I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, still drawing her MP salary while filming on the other side of the world in Australia without permission, by the way, from her party for her absence. As a result, she lost the Tory whip for months after this um, <coughs> oversight. Dorries is one of the inventors of the so-called right-wing culture wars and a big fan of GB News, or GBBs as they've become known. She has a history of tweets tinged with racism, one threatening black comedian Reginald D. Hunter with a shotgun after she saw him talking to her daughter, and others that displayed Islamophobia. Plus, on another occasion, she shared a tweet from right-wing extremist Stephen Yaxley Lennon, alias Tommy Robinson. She has a long history of voting in Parliament against gay rights and has also made comments suggesting that journalists criticising the government were left-leaning and not behaving appropriately. However, she herself got into trouble last year by retweeting a doctored video that purported to show Keir Starmer defending Muslim grooming gangs when in fact he was the main prosecutor of those gangs. She was reprimanded and ordered by her own party to delete her tweet, but to this day she's never apologised for it. 
Another one among those being sacked is quite possibly the worst of a very bad bunch and the one I was personally most pleased to see axed. The corrupt Robert Jemrick, friend of the pornography magnate Richard Desmond and responsible for overruling local planners to approve one of Desmond's property developments that allowed him to trouser £45 million that would otherwise have been due as a community levy had the development not had the fast track approval from Robert Jemrick. For further details of this appalling man's other misdeeds, it won't surprise you to hear he was also the subject of a previous Truth to Power Unfit for Office video, which I'll link to here. The highlight was a you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours agreement with his junior minister, Jake Berry, to allocate each other's relatively wealthy constituencies, multi-million pound grants from the Towns Fund, which was meant to be spent on deprived boroughs as part of this make-believe pretend Tory policy of levelling up. One other highlight of the sackings I mentioned is the axing of the incompetent and arrogant Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson. Probably the least surprising move by Johnson, as we all knew that Williamson had been retained for as long as he had just to be the fall guy to Johnson, protecting Johnson from the aftermath of the bodged A-level fiasco in 2020, when Williamson ignored the advice of experts one of the features of Johnson's cabal, of course, about how an exam grade awarding algorithm was unfairly biased towards private school pupils and then had to back down when there was a national outcry about state school pupils being penalised. More recently, Gavin Williamson claimed to have met black social campaigner and footballer Marcus Rashford, only for it to turn out that it had actually been a black rugby player, Maro Itoji. I mean, for an education secretary not to be able to identify perhaps the highest profile campaigner in the whole arena of education, following those campaigns that Marcus Rashford ran about free school meals and about getting more kids reading, that shows quite a scandalous level of ignorance and lack of interest in his role as Minister for Education. And who can forget Williamson's previous role as Defence Secretary under Theresa May when he famously told Russia to go away and shut up? and was quite widely mocked and ridiculed by the press for that. He was then fired by May for leaking Security Council details about Huawei and 5G. This level of treasonous behaviour is only matched amongst the current cabinet by Cruella Patel. I'm coming to the end of this video and I'm aware that I've not even mentioned the new Education Secretary, Nadim Sahawi, a man who has no known interest or experience of education provision whatsoever, a man who owns multiple properties, is the second highest earning MP in Westminster, and yet who claimed for heating his stables on expenses paid for by the taxpayer. Yet again, here's another guy who's been appointed because of loyalty to Johnson rather than experience or ability. So that's a quick overview of some of the more eye-catching moves, but as you can see, it's very much a case of rearranging the debt chairs on the Titanic. Just when you thought the cabinet couldn't get any worse, Johnson's made another round of appointments based not on competence, interest or fitness for office, but mainly on who sucks up to him the most and who's prepared to hold their tongue about the ongoing disasters of Brexit, national insurance hikes and real terms pay cuts for nurses.